This is the new Viking Tactics Trust Trigger. The reason we designed this trigger is we wanted a very lightweight trigger, so this is about three and a half pound trigger pull if you pull at the middle of the trigger. It also is flat, so you can have very good trigger feel when you're trying to shoot fast and more importantly when you're trying to shoot accurately. We also put a small bump on the end so you'll know when you're close to the end of the trigger. This also helps if you want to get a little bit more leverage, you can get a little bit closer to the bottom of the trigger. This we designed in conjunction with Christensen Arms. Okay, so when you get this trigger, you have to disassemble the lower receiver of your rifle. The way that we do this is, and you may not have to do this step, but either take a screwdriver or an Allen wrench and loosen the pistol grip on your rifle. Don't take it all the way off. I loosen that enough that I can pull it down to relieve the tension on the spring that holds the safety in place. I happen to have a VTAC trigger in this gun right now, so I'm going to go ahead and loosen up one of the set screws so I can take the uh, safety out. And I removed the safety out of the system. Don't shake this around. You've got plungers and springs and everything in there, so you don't want that all to come uh, flying out. The next thing we're going to do is push out your existing trigger pins. The uh, hammer pin, if you have a conventional hammer, it's probably going to fly out of the gun at that time. Push out the trigger pin, and I happen to have one of these modules in there right now. So simply remove that and pull out your new VTAC truss trigger. Before you install this, the, install this, there's a couple things you have to do. One, there's two small set screws at the rear. You have to make sure that those are backed out so they're completely flush with the bottom of the trigger housing. The other thing you have to do is remove this packing screw at the front. This flat plastic screw keeps you from dry firing this trigger. Simply remove that screw. You won't need that. Take that trigger system, slide it down into your lower receiver, and then actually at this point, a good way to do it is just put your safety back in. Slide your safety back in. You might have to twist it a little bit to get it to stay in place. And then push that grip back into place and tighten the screw. I'm going to tighten that all the way down. I'll tighten that even more later on. But just to show you that I actually tighten that screw down. Make sure the safety is going in the on position. Now I'm going to take the two pins, the uh, hammer pin, the trigger pin, and it doesn't matter which order you put those in. And then the last thing that we've got to do is we have to take our 1 16th inch Allen wrench and slide that in there and tighten the rear screws to hold the pins in place and to make sure the trigger stays in place. So make sure the pins are where you want them and tighten that up. Don't over tighten. If you have a captured pin system, that would be prefer preferable to tightening uh, these screws. Captured pin system is my uh, preferred way of doing it, but that's another step. If you have a captured pin system, what that means is these pins have a piece that holds them in place so they can't move. Once I get those in place, I don't dry fire the trigger. If you do want to drop the trigger, put the weapon on fire and hold that hammer to make sure that it doesn't slam forward. Okay, now I take the upper receiver. For this system, slide it in place, attach both screws, make sure the weapon is clear and you'll be able to feel the reset and con conduct a function check. This trigger is designed to be very, very lightweight, very fast and allows you if you want, sometimes when I'm shooting accurately I get a little bit more finger on the trigger, when I'm trying to shoot fast I put a little bit less finger on the trigger and as you can see with this particular trigger you have very short reset.